Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle I probably shouldn't be doing given my current upload speeds um, but this is by Alexander Rapper and I was really impressed by the last puzzle we covered of his on the channel and he's done this puzzle as a tribute to Fistimafel of course one of my very favorite setters and it's a spiral galaxy puzzle and it's got thermometers in it and I just I just want to do it so th that's what we're going to have to do and I'm going to have to accept that it's going to probably take my computer out of action uh, for about the next 24 hours now let me read you the rules what we've got Normal Sudoku rules apply. The circles given in the grid are the centers of point symmetric galaxies, which function as cages for the killer Sudoku. The numbers inside the circles indicate the sum of the digits in the cages. In addition, each cage is a thermometer. Along thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb end, but the bulb end is not given. The cages, thermometers cannot branch, i.e. there are only two ends to each thermometer and the thermometer must also be symmetrical about the point. Okay, well that sort of makes, uh, so I suppose that makes things, yeah, I sort of do understand that. And the digits in a cage thermometer may not repeat, well that's normal rules. Not every cell in the grid has to be part of a galaxy. So let's take a moment to think about what this means. Um, so let's look at this, I don't know, let's look at this 15 dot. You can see it's spanning these two cells. Now, what does it mean that this is the center of a point symmetrical galaxy? It means that if, for example, we decided this square had to be part of this 15 cage, then this square would also have to be part of it because we must maintain the symmetry around the circle. Now you can see that's not gonna work because this uh, galaxy here is already consuming this square. So what firstly we're going to have to do is to build this killer Sudoku using these spiral galaxy restrictions and then somehow we're going to have to plot um, how these thermometers work. Um, so let me just have a quick think about thermometers. Let's imagine the 38 cage was, I don't know, could it be that shape? It probably can't be that shape, but let's just imagine it was that shape. Then one end of this would have to be a, a bulb of a thermometer and then the thermometer would have to we'd have to increase the digits as we, we went along the thermometer but we also have to make sure if I don't know if there's a funny cage. look this cage let's look at this this is a greater than 12 galaxy so let's imagine that this actually was a 45 galaxy and it took all of the central box let's just color this in so now we'd have to decide somehow how to organize a thermometer within this shape such that it was also symmetrical about the galaxy. Now that's almost certainly going to be extremely difficult because I can't think how we do that. Um, I suppose maybe we could do it like this. So it could do, 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 do. Um, that would be symmetrical about this point. So yeah, so th that's going to take some thinking about. I have no clue how we're going to do this, but what I'm going to do to start with is just try and plot the killer Sudoku. Um, so do have a go. Click on the link under the video. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now, I think, is just apply loads of colors to the grid. I'm going to just label all of these galaxies, you know, with sort of with a color for as much of them as I can perceive is valid. So we don't know anything about the 12, greater than 12 indeed. We don't know anything about the seven, the 38, we know very little about, it's a domino. The 35, we know very little about. The 20, we know very little about. The 13, we know very little about less than nine right that's not exactly uh, giving a lot away is it and an eight cage here so right so I've, I've made a great deal of progress here um what on earth do we do here sorry there's a bit of bird noise outside my window i hope, hope that's not too distracting the 20 cage look 
that can't we can't go to this square because that would imply we must also take this square which is the symmetrical counterpart around the dot and we can't take this square because that has a symmetrical counterpart so those two squares are the only squares we can take within we obviously these two squares aren't enough to get to 20 even if we put 8 and 9 in them now in fact that is the limit of the 20 cage because we can't if we were to put one more cell into it, we'd have to put another cell in order to maintain symmetry. And you can't make six cells add up to 20 with different digits because 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 21. So this is now our 20 cage. That means the 13 cage is now fixed as a two cell cage. The less than nine clue, well, if it's less than nine, it can't yeah because we can't increase it by one we'd have to increase it by two because of the way that this circle is in the middle of its domino this uh, cage is also complete as is this eight cage right, so we are finding some logic here the seven cage a seven cage. so this could this could just be a single seven on its own uh, ah okay there's something look this is either a seven on its own or it's a three cell galaxy now if it's a three cell galaxy because of it's bounded on its right side it can't come this way so it would have to go to those two squares now that's interesting because these this would have to be one two and four but because of the thermometer condition the two would have to go in the central square so in fact this square has to be a 2 or a 7. <laughs> now that doesn't come out very well with my highlighting. Hopefully I'll just remember this. There is a, a bit of a restriction on this square. The 38 cage. 38 cage. So that... Obviously it can't be a 9 cell cage. We know it needs to have... Okay, so it could be an 8 cell cage and then it would be missing a seven or it could be a six cell cage in which case it would be missing a one two and a four so there's some sort of symmetry going on with this square here but i don't actually know how this 38 cage could do anything i mean it could could even come back on itself like that i have no idea what that 38 cage does 15 cages it would be very useful if we could lock these down as dominoes um, because then I would know these four squares would be 6, 7, 8 and 9 but I don't see how to no, I mean that's just complete conjecture we've got a, a 9 here so that could be a 9 on its own or it's a 3 cell sum that would add to 9. So if it's a 3 cell sum it would have to either be 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 6 or 1, 3, 5. The central square would therefore be a 2 or a 3 along the thermometer. So this square is a 2, 3 or a 9. useful if I could bound this 16 cage as well because if that was a domino that would be 7 and 9 35 cage so the 35 cage it's got to be an even number of digits because whenever we add we've already got we start with 2 as we add 1 on we'd have to add its symmetrical counterpart on so this is you can't get to 35 with four digits and you can ah okay so this 35 cage is exactly six digits large and we know that because if it was eight digits large um, the digit missing would have to add up to 10 now how do I know that well it's because I know that all of the digits from 1 to 9 add up to 45 so if I had an eight cell cage that would imply eight cell cage adding to 35 it would imply that the missing digit was equal to a 10 which is impossible so this is a six cell cage 
And what does that mean? It's bounded on this side, look. So this cell can't be part of the green cage because its symmetrical counterpart is in the grey shape. So this is... So it could come here and here. That would be fine, in which case it would then... It would then have to go here, here. That is one possible way this 35 cage is built. Ah. Ah, now that's interesting because it's either built this way or its next digit, uh, its next sort of cell after this is not this one or this one. It's one of these two cells. Now, why is that interesting? Well, it's because its sixth cell, therefore, is always always takes these two squares as its extreme as its final positions so let me just go through that again and check it so if we have if it goes this way it must go up because it can't come down so this is one possibility the other possibility is it goes up immediately and then it has to turn left there because it can't turn right so all these two squares are part of the green 35 cage Right, okay, so now we're starting to get somewhere because this square here now can't be a 9. Now, why can't it be a 9? Well, I know the 35 cage contains a 9 um, because I know it's 6 cells large and therefore it's missing 3 digits which add up to 10. Now, I can't make 3 digits add up to 10 if one of those digits is a 9. So, there's a 9 in one of these two squares. And if there's a 9 in one of these two squares, this square can't be a 9 because this, this cell sees that one. So if this turns out to be the 9, we know the 9 is going to be at one end of the 35 because of the thermometer condition. So the 9 is either here or here. Both of those cells see that square. And that, that means that this, this is not a one cell cage. So this, this is all grey. And... So, so now, now my 16 cage is bounded, look, because now this is all grey, the 16 cage can't move anywhere, that's 7 or 9. This, mu this must be important. This, I mean, there's so little else we've actually managed to get anything with. So the shape of this 35 is either here and here. Or here and here. Ah, now, hang on. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute, because... I can take the logic on the nines further. I know the missing digits from the 35 cage add up to 10, and there are three of them. So I know the 35 cage also contains an 8. Now, if it contains an 8, the 8 is either here, 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 or here. But the important thing is that the if the 35 cage contained a 7, where would the 7 go? It would have to be in column 2. It would have to be in one of those two cells. Because we know if this is the 9, the 8 is here or here, and then it shifts back to the center. If this is the 9, the 8 is here or here, and then we shift back to the center. So if there is a 7 on the 35 cage, it has to appear in one of those two positions, and it can't. So the 35 cage doesn't have a 7 in it, therefore it doesn't have a 1, a 2, or a 7 in it. Because those that's the only way of making 3 digits add to 10, if one of those digits is a 7. This must be important now. So there's seven. Right, it is important because now. 
oh yeah yeah I'm gonna get a digit in the grid I'm gonna get a digit in the grid because I now know the 35 cage doesn't contain one two or seven so it does contain three as its lowest digit and the three must be at the bulb end of the thermometer which is either here or here so these squares are a three nine pair and these both see that square so this square can't be a three and is a two which means this nine is a one has to have a one and a six to join the two to make up nine actually I can write those two cells in presumably because 35 cage it's going to have a 4 and an 8 into one of these squares and then it needs a 5 and a 6 in its center so this is a 5 and a 6 oh it would be so handy if I could deduce which way round this goes this 9 cage is is the end this is a complete now it can't be two seven it couldn't be two seven actually because of the seven cage oh now hang on a minute look just wondering if I can do something with the the fact that there's a one and a two in this triple seeing I think <sighs> I'm so sorry about this I'm struggling a bit here to get my head around I think I'm on the right lines with thinking about this 35 cage but I know this if it's if it's these two squares that complete the 35 cage, this is a 4-8 pair. And that would give us 1s, 2s and 3s into those three squares. If it's these two square cells that complete the 35 cage, this would be a 4-8 pair. Oh, now now is that what I'm meant to be noticing let's just I want to just look at this because if this is the way the 35 cage looks all of a sudden the top of this 20 cage gets very congested because every single cell in the 35 cage sees that domino which means which means that this, these two cells have to be made up of the digits 1, 2 and 7. Ah, yeah, 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 I've got it, I've got it. Because, well, I obviously can't put a 7. This, this has to be a thermometer which starts with a low digit because obviously if it goes 7, 2, this would be a 1 and this would have to be a 0 and it certainly wouldn't add to 20. So we can put a 1 or a 2 here. Can this be a 7? Well, no, if this is a 7, this would have to be 8, this would have to be 9 and we would break the 20 total. So the only way this works is if this is a 1, this is a 2, and now these two squares have to be 8 and 9 to add up to 20. Well, where does the 9 go now? Oh, no, hang on. Oh, good. I'd spotted, I thought the 9 had to go here, but then I suddenly realised the 9 can go here, but the 9 can't go here because of the 8. The 8 forces their square to be a 4, which means that must be a 3 because this is the low end of the thermometer, and now the 9 is forced there, which is where I thought it was forced, and it can't be because there's a 7 9 pair in the column. So this is very, very important because this means that we have fixed the shape of our 35 cage now and I don't know if that was the way I was intended to do that but it is the way I have found to do that and I will take it so this is a 4-8 pair this now is a 1-2-3 triple this square's got to be 
six, seven, or eight. This is a two, so that can't be a two, so this can't be a seven. There must be a two down there. Oh, now, now this triple here is interesting, look, because there now has to be a one and a two in those three squares, which means at least one of them is part of this 20 cage. The one can never go halfway along a thermometer, so that can never be a one. So if if this square is a, oh no, if this square is a one, it's not necessary for that one to be a two. If Oh, ah, no, I've spotted something else. Look, I use the threes here and here to remove a three from this square, but equally, one of these squares is a three, so none of those squares can be a three. So the three in box one is in one of those three cells. Now, maybe... So this square, if this square, is it possible? No, oh, yeah, okay, this square has to be a one or a two. And we can see that because we can try, let's try and make it not a one or a two. Well, the only way, we can't make this a one, so this would have to be a two, and this would have to be a one, but now this is clearly the low end of the thermometer, so this would have to be a lower digit, which it couldn't be. So this square is definitely a one or a two. Now, does that matter? <laughs> so this square, if this is, if this is not one, two, oh, this is tricky. I feel I'm right on the cusp of understanding this, but I haven't really grasped I feel this 20 cage is important. I'd really like this to be one and two. That would make that eight and nine, that six and seven. So how can I make this work? Again, I'm so sorry if you guys are spotting how to do this quickly. Uh, I am not, most certainly not spotting how to do it quickly. Um, Maybe I have to look somewhere else. No, I refuse. I'm going to keep looking at this because this I have made progress with. Now, see, it's quite interesting, isn't it? We can't have... Not yet managed to place... Oh, maybe I can do it a different way. Look, if this is a nine, this will be an eight. That would force this to be six, seven. If on the other hand, this was a three, three, four, five, six. Now this combination here, the minimum, if, if this wasn't one, two, if this was not one, two, the minimum I could put into this square, which, because I couldn't put three, four, five, or six into it, would be seven, and that would break it. Because even one, seven, eight, nine is too much. So, so this would have to be one, two, which would make this eight, nine, which would make this six, seven. So whichever way, whether this is nine, eight, six five or three four five six this always ends up being six seven 
which does nothing. We know this is the top end of the thermometer though. Ah, okay, so if this is the top end of the thermometer, let's try and make this not a 9. If this is not a 9, this would be 8, then this couldn't be 7 or 6, this would be 8, 5. 8, 5 adds up to 13, so these two squares would need to add up to 7, which they can't, because this has to be a 1 or 2, which means this has to be a 5 or 6. So now this square has... Let me just double check that. If this was 8, 4 on the other hand, we just can't get to 20, can we? No, so this cannot be an 8. This has to be a 9. Now... So what are the options here? So if this is not 8, this would now have to be 5. These would add up to 14. These would have to add up to 6, which would make... This would have to be a 4, and this would have to be a 2. So what is the problem with that? So 2, this is the only other thing that doesn't... That, other than 1, 2, 8, 9 that works here. So this would have to be 2, 4... Five, nine. This would have to be a one, of course. Actually, look, that would also mean this was the high end of this thermometer. Ah, ah, this breaks. This breaks. Wow, this breaks because of this cage. I think it breaks anyway, because now I know this has to be a one. And because this is a 4, this is an 8, so this square is the low end of the thermometer, this is a 3. So we now have a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple at the top of this column. So what do I put into these two squares? Well, the minimum I could make these two squares is 5 and 6. But as soon as I extend this, and I will have to extend it because obviously 5 and 6 do not add up to 18, I have to extend it both ways so one side of this will have to be in fact it's going to have to be this side looking at the one two three triple now would have to be a seven or more and seven plus six plus five is already 18 before i take in another digit so this is not right and that is important because i can now say with certainty this square has to be an eight and once this square is an eight this has to be a two this has to be a one and we are we've basically finished Except we haven't really, have we? We've not really done. Oh dear, don't don't get rid of the screen, whatever you do. So why does this matter now? May, is is it the 18 cage I meant to look at now? Surely. I still can't... I still haven't worked out the order of this 35 cage. This can't have an 8 or a 9 at one end of it. So, this 8 cage here now can't be 2, 6, it has to be 3, 5 or 1, 7. This less than 9 cage now doesn't include a 1. Oh, goodness me. Maybe, does it, less than 9. So what, what are the options here? This could be if this was 8, this would be 3, 5. If this was 7, could be 2, 5. And that wouldn't actually impact there. Ah! Or maybe, is it down here I'm meant to be spotting something clever? 
So one the eighteen cage now can't contain an eight or a nine. So it could have a seven in it. really be very very useful if I could rule out I feel there must be a way of ruling out more from this central domino here if I could do that I would be away it's got to be a two in one of these squares doesn't have to be a one. I still don't know. Six? No, I don't know enough about sixes. There's got to be a five in one of those two squares. This 20 cage is, was so hard to resolve. Why? Five, that would be fine, it would still work. Three, four, would place a nine there. Oh, I'm just gibbering now. I can't I can't work this out. I feel I'm close to understanding the next step, but not close enough. It feels so important, you know, that this 8, 9 are ruled out from those two squares. That does seem like monumentally important. 3, 4, 5, 6. Adds up to 18 rather nicely. Two, three, four. No, that wouldn't be enough. Is it something to do with the seven that I've not placed? Seven has to go in one of those three squares. I don't think so. Three nine pairs here. No. N oh, is it nine? Nine in this box. So nine in this box now has to be in one of those two positions. <laughs> no, that still doesn't crack it. Eight. Ah, ah, hang on. Ah, I, th I think I've now, I've just spotted it. And this is very difficult. Well, very difficult for me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Look, look at row one of the grid. This is the key. This is the key. If this is three, four, now, where do I put 8 and 9 in row 1 of the grid? Well, this has to add up to less than 9. So I can't put an 8 in it. So I have to put 8 and 9 into those two squares. And obviously this one can't be an 8 or a 9. So this can't be a 3 or a 4. How hard is that? So this has to be 9. This is 8. Well, this is, this is important. Surely now we are off and running. That's a 1. This, oh, this is massive. This is going to crack the whole thing. The one here fixes this as a 2-3 pair. This has to be a 9 by Sudoku now, because we can't put a 9 in the 8 cage. Ah! 
ah, now, and now perhaps this 18 cage is resolvable because now these two squares have a minimum value of 4, 5, which means this has a minimum value of... So the absolute minimum I can make this square, this square, and this square is 4, 5, and 6. 4, 5, and 6 add up to 15. But it could still be 4, 5, and and seven couldn't it but it can't ah but it can't we can't now we must if this was four six seven it would break so these two squares have to be four and five we don't yet know whether there's a six or seven here to pair up with the two or three but if this is four and five that means there's a three four pair there maybe this has to be a 7 now. This has to be 6, 9, which is now resolved. 9, 6, 9, 7. That square's got to be a 5. This is a 3, 4 pair, so this is a 7, 8 pair. I feel like we've made giant strides forwards. What a puzzle this is. I mean, I think I've really messed it up at the top here. Like, I should have spotted that more quickly, but it's not that easy to see. And you you guys always say, oh, you'd like to see puzzles where I, I make a mess of it. Well, here, here you go. I've made a bit of a mess of this one. But I still love it. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, now... Let's have a think about this. So we've got these two 15 cages here. These add up to nine. So these, however this is arranged, it also must add up to nine. So I know there's a six or a seven in one of these two cells. Therefore that will pair with the six, seven at the top of the grid. <sighs> It's still most certainly not rolling over, is it? Um, seven, six, seven, two. So if if this was a domino, it would have to now be seven and eight. That would make that would make this have to be a six in one of these two cells. In fact, it would have to be that one, because this would have to then extend. Ah, got it, got it. If this 15 cage extends, how does it extend? It has to extend those two directions, because it can't come up, because that would reflect onto here. Those four squares would therefore form the 15 cage, but they couldn't include a 1. How do we make 15 in four cells without a 1? Well, there's only one way. 2, 3, 4, and 6. And we can't make that because there's a 6 there already. So this 15 cage cannot extend. It is 7 and 8 because it can't be 6 and 9. That means there's a 6 in one of these two squares now. That means we fix the 7 and the 6 at the top. That means we... Oh... Well, that's important for this cage now. If there's a 6 here, this can't be a 6-9 domino. So this has to extend now, and because it's exactly the same way, it has to go to those two squares. And that is beautiful, because now this can't be the 6, because this needs to be part of the purple cage, which means this is a 3. This, And then we know the order of the, of the um, thermometer, obviously. It must do that. And we, again, we are making a bit more progress all of a sudden. So we get two here. This foursome has to add up to 15 without using three and four. Or, ooh, or six, seven, eight in this box. So, right, so this, we can't do, we can't, we must have a one and a two in here. Because if we don't, 
1 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 is already 16. So we need a 1 and a 2 in here. The other two squares we've got to add up to 12 without using 3, 9 or 4, 8. So we actually know that this is 1, 2, 5 and 7. This square is an 8. This square is a 7. These two squares are 6 and 9. 7, 8 here forces that to be a 7. So this becomes a 1, 2, 5 triple. There must be a 9 down there. What a puzzle. This is, I mean, this is just, oh, this 7 look fixes that that one is a 2 in the middle of this 7 cage. So the 7 cage has to do that. And the four at the top means that can't be a four, so it must be one four like this. One, two, five. So we need three, four. This has to be a three or a four. Three, four, nine, three, four, nine here. 6, 9 here. This 38 cage is now bounded on its left side. 30, oh, it's so long since I did the logic on the 38 domino, but basically that has to, ah. So it's either, it's either an eight cell cage and it's missing a seven, or it's a six cell cage and it's missing one, two, and four. Which means it definitely has to have a nine in it, and it definitely has to have an eight in it. Now that, have I broke, oh, I've broken it. I don't believe it. I was going to say, look, the only place it can get a nine from is here or here. One of these could be a nine. But if one of these is a nine, I have to put an eight there. And I can't. Oh, what have I done wrong? Can it get a nine from somewhere else? It can't get that nine. That's too big a cage. It can't get that nine. Oh, I suppose it could actually get the nine. It could get a nine from this box, maybe. Is that possible? So then, where can, yeah, that might work. If that's the nine, then I, ca then I could put an eight here. Nine, eight, whatever, whatever, and that domino. What's wrong with that? That might be possible. And in fact, I'm going to go further than that and say, it, in fact, it is the only thing that is possible because I have to put a nine in the 38 cage. I can't put make these the nines because of the eight problem. So I have to get a nine from this box. If I put the nine here, you can see the reflection of this is this square so that doesn't work this has to be the nine this has to be the nine and this can't be the eight now so not that is too big and it clashes this has to be the eight and we do we end up with this shape this shape does not have a one two or four in it which is fine which means it does have a in fact we now know what this looks like this must have a seven it must have a six, it must have a five, and it must have a three. That fixes that that's a four. These squares have got to be three and five, which is still unresolved. The nine fixes the nine and the six. That's a six. I'm terrified at the moment. Every digit I put in, I'm convinced the puzzle's just gonna break. Um, that's an eight, that's a five by Sudoku. Oh goodness, this has to be less than nine. So this has to be a two or a three. At least both of those are possible. This has to add up to eight without using five and six. This has to be one seven. 
That's still okay, I think. One here, one here means this is a one by Sudoku. That square's a four by Sudoku. This is a two or a three by Sudoku. These squares have got to be four and eight by Sudoku, which is resolved now. I don't believe it. Am I going to crack this? Probably not. Two. Um, this square here has to be a two or a three. So what haven't I used now? I've used, I've not used this greater than 12 clue. Ah, and I tell you what I haven't used, the fact that that is a thermometer, I forgot that. So this has got to be one, two, five, which probably is helpful. In fact, it's remarkably not that helpful. These squares have got to be two, three, five. Then, uh, oh, that's a two. Therefore, this is a three, five, five pair. Ominous. Look, we've got a deadly pattern. So that's somehow got to get resolved by something. These two squares have got to be six and seven. Ah, the six up here. That is now useful. Six, seven, seven, eight. What can I put into this square? Looking at the row, it's got to be three, four, five, or nine. Looking at the column, oh, three, five here, no, four or nine then. But it's got to be greater than 12, so I can't put a nine in its center because no thermometer I can then, well, it would have to just contain a nine. So this has to be a four. Ah, oh, still doesn't crack the puzzle. That's got to be a nine then. That fixes the nine and the three down there. That means there's a three in one of those two squares, which is nice. That fixes our. Oops. That fixes my two here. Fixes my three. Fixes my two here. These two squares now have got to include a one and an eight, which we can now resolve. This is another of our three, five pairs, which at least we can do that one. That fixes the three and the four. That fixes the four and the one. Okay, so we end up here. And I've got to draw a thermometer. Oh, I see. <laughs> this is beautiful. What a beautiful finish look. If we have to decide how this extends, well, obviously it can't extend in that direction. So it, it could come downwards. If it comes downwards, it must also come upwards. These three squares now sum up to 12, but there's a one in here already. So we can't extend this thermometer any further because if we did, there would have to be a, a zero or a minus number on it. So this is not the correct orientation. This is gorgeous. So now this is the correct orientation. And look at that. Therefore, this digit has to be lower than four it's three, three, four, and nine do add up to greater than 12. This is the end of the thermometer because again, we've got the nine on it. So this is the final thermometer. That fixes the five, that fixes the five, that fixes the three. And that is how to solve this puzzle. Oh my goodness me. I mean, I feel I feel I was a bit slow here. I know, I know that there will be some comments about that, but I really did try my best and goodness only knows how long this puzzle is going to take to upload. But I absolutely loved this. This was such a challenge and so interesting. Um, let me know how you got on and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.